Hey, so I haven't done a tower garden video since last year, so I thought I'd do a little quickie just to um, to really actually zero in on some troubleshooting ideas from some of the stuff that I ran into last year, and I thought that might be useful for some people who are neither have a tower garden or who are considering getting one, and just to consider these uh, options for if you run into any quibbles in your uh, gardening experience, and I just have a little list I'm going to go down. Uh, the first thing that came to mind was not to let your plants grow throughout the entire season because what happens is the roots grow way too long and way too bushy and dense and then you're not able to pull them out of the slots in the tower. So you want to make sure that once you get a good enough yield out of them, make sure you have some seedlings going so that you can replace things on well, not a regular basis, but maybe like once um, uh, every two months or so or less, uh, you want to be changing it up because the roots, depending on the plants, can really grow very aggressively. And you don't want to run into a situation where you can't pull it out and then you have to undo your tower and put it back together. It's a lot of work. So you want to avoid that. Um, another one is to, uh, when you're putting in the pH balancers in the water, you want to make sure that you let that sit for quite a while. Even if you're stirring all that, if you really want to get an accurate pH reading, you want to let it sit for a while, even let the tower run just to get it going because what I found was uh, if I would do a pH test just off within a little while, if I didn't wait long enough, when I did it again, I got like up to a 0.5, uh, sometimes 0 0.1, uh, one whole point variance in the pH. So you really do want to make sure that you give it time to diffuse fully. Otherwise, you're not going to give the water a pH that might be suitable, needed for your plant, and you're going to have stunted growth and uh, run into problems with that. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, you want to check your plants uh, regularly, like even once a day, um, especially the, depending on the weather you have. I noticed that when we have more heat and humidity, there literally are quite large growth spurts. and when this happens, they suck up a lot more water. So if you have a lot of high heat days, uh, you really want to make sure you come check up on your plants. Um, you might want to consider pruning them, um, especially if you're going things like cucumbers, things that are very fine, heavy, and there are things like a zucchini here where it grows plant uh, leaves that start to decay. Uh, these aren't useful for the plant and you can actually trim these things because um, everything that's on there is going to be an added drain to the resources and the water and the minerals. So you want to do pruning, um, which is going to be very specific to the plants you're growing to get different effects. Um, also, I guess this ties into um, water. You want to check your water levels at least once a week, even more if you can. Um, and again, the reason I say this is because I've run into situations where the plants have these little growth spurts and then I find that I uh, check the basin and there's like hardly any water left in there and had I waited for the next day then the pump would have been pumping dry air and that will ruin your pump and it uh, obviously your plants will <laughs> suffer if not die if they don't receive uh, regular watering within um, for any stretch of time so you do want to make sure you check your water regularly and and um, Especially also if you have fruit bearing plants, which would be things like zucchini and cucumbers or water heavy uh, fruits, the more that stuff you grow, the more quickly you're going to drain your water reserves. So keep that in mind. Another one is uh, make water refilling convenient. Uh, well, the system that I have set up is now is I have two BPA free basket, um, plastic containers of sorts and each one holds 20 liters of water and I have two of them at all times that I fill up with just regular tap water from the backyard and because it's the most convenient but because of the chlorine I let that water sit just covered with like a cheesecloth so nothing gets in there but it allows the chlorine to evaporate and I let that happen for every every time I do a fill up I refill that water in my containers and I let it sit for however long until I need it again by then I make sure that the chlorine is fully evaporated because the chlorine again is going to do damage to your plants, stunt your growth and it's not good for us, it's certainly not good for the plants either so you don't want to drink that stuff. Another one is 
make um, harvest your greens daily. So I, I this year I chose to do mostly leafy greens and less of the jungle mayhem that I had last year with all sorts of crazy things going, uh, just to keep it a little bit more convenient. Also, I, I like using a lot more greens as part of my regular daily diet. So um, what I find is when you pick the greens, you encourage growth. And not only that, it also gets you in the habit of eating more greens. So that's also a good thing. And the another thing I like to include as well is um, flowers, uh, edible flowers. Because I find that, or I, I feel personally, based on my experience and observations, that you, at least from an energetic perspective, when you eat all the colors, you empower every part of your body, if you're familiar with the chakra system. So I like growing flowers, and um, some of the ones that I'm doing are like marigold, uh, borage, and um, there's others, can't remember right now, um, but the they're a nice thing to add to your food reserves, because what I've noticing and experiencing is that it's not about the quantity of what you're eating, it's the quality of what you're eating. So if you're growing less heavy, uh, you know, fruit-bearing things and you have more leafy things, that's not necessarily a bad thing if you translate that into your diet. So that you're eating more of the, the nutrient-dense, fibrous foods because we don't get anywhere near enough fiber in our diets, in the average North American diet. And fiber is super important because that's what binds toxins in the body. That's what helps things to, to actually bulk up. And then you need water because water is what actually gets the movement to happen along the intestines and this large intestine. And movement is the third ingredient. You need to be moving to get things to, to shift and, and you know make their way out regularly. So those three things are huge. And fiber is so easily overlooked. And I'm not talking about your germ fi uh, fiber and wheat bran and all that kind of stuff. That is more like razor blades in your tummy. You really want to be going after fibrous green leafy vegetables. So grow a lot of those. Grow edible flowers. They're super tasty. They're colorful. You can make really cool looking salad dishes and make that appealing for anyone who might not be so interested in eating salads and raw foods. So that's something else to consider. Um, another one is pay attention to lighting. Last year I had my tower in a different section of the backyard where for too large portion of the day there was a lot of shade that covered uh, the majority of the tower. And so this year I moved it more in the central area in the backyard so that there's no fencing or less things making shade. And that's super important because what I realized was that I, even though I had a lot of things growing, they were growing fairly slowly because they didn't have enough sunlight coming at them. So you definitely want to put things in a, uh, put your tower in a place that's going to be receiving an abundance of sunlight. And then if you have things growing that are too sensitive to too much sunlight, then you can just put a little covering, uh, something flat on the top of the tower to give a little bit of shade if necessary. I actually do that when it rains sometimes, if it's like heavy downpour, just to offer a little bit of protection. Um, so light. And if you're growing indoors, you definitely uh, go to um, a shop that uh, sells uh, stuff for hydroponics, aquaponics, things like that. They have grow lights of all types and they have long ones that you can attach to the tomato cage. And I had three attached when I was growing indoors last year and that was doing pretty well actually. I had them on all the time except when I went to sleep. And that uh, helps with the obviously the growth. It's also helpful if you keep the tower by a window if, if you're growing indoors. And do this uh, for uh, your entire duration that you're growing indoors if you can't grow outside all year round, which is the case in a climate like in Canada. Uh, I think the last thing I want to talk about is pest control. Um, I had some, a friend bring over some things for me that unfortunately had white flies and aphids that I didn't realize. And these things transferred over into my tower and I gotta tell you, it's a lot harder to fight these things when they're inside because you can't hose them off which is what I would suggest if you're growing outside, just get your hose from the backyard and spray off with a light pressure, the early infestations and keep checking leaves regularly for things. If you see little eggs or anything growing on there, if it's too much stuff that you see growing on a leaf and you can't really get rid of it all, you might actually just want to pull off the leaves. You know, if you take off the majority of the infestation, 
you can hopefully get lucky and it won't transfer into other parts of the and other stuff in the tower. Um, if hosing off doesn't uh, and picking things off isn't sufficient for the, the or you want to try something different. I have uh, heard people using something like a combination of water with neem oil and uh, just some organic soap and you can just shake that up and spray that on the leaves and that's supposed to be able to really kill off a lot of the pests and um, I didn't really try that uh, or that combination specifically I tried just soap and water and I noticed that it actually dries out the bugs that are on there the problem was when I was growing them inside they were growing quicker than I was able to deal with them. So at the end of the day, if it's too much, it's just like pick off the leaves, um, hose them off if you can, if you're out doing it outside. If you're in doing this inside and you run into pest problems, um, good luck. <laughs> but um, anyways, uh, I'll leave it at that uh, in terms of uh, some troubleshooting stuff. If you have other questions or um, things that you'd like to know about that maybe I haven't um, covered here then just leave me some comments and any questions and I'd be happy to get back to you with ideas and whatnot um, I innovate a lot with based on what comes up and I find usually I'm able to find some solution and if not Google is always a wonderful friend all right my friends I'm just going to show you quickly my tower garden this year I want to mention I started very very late unfortunately I recommend you start your seedlings really early on in the season so that you don't get too far behind in growing season and uh, so this is what I want to show you I have like zucchinis here yellow zucchinis that are like a foot long and like wider way wider than the girth of my hand and that's a big one there over here look at this guy ah, trying to get in there just compared to my hand this thing is way over a foot long and super fat so that's a yellow zucchini. That's going to make for probably, uh, well actually going to make a nice raw zucchini salad with this guy and that's going to be plenty for sharing with the whole family. I also want to mention another cool thing about zucchini because it's one of my favorite things to grow. They should have flowers that spread from the, the zucchini itself, as you can see here. But also there are the male part flowers that grow just on their own stems like this and you can cut these they're perfectly edible they're very tasty actually and uh, like I said just add flowers to your foods and to your dishes they're really wonderful um, another one of my favorites is rapini this stuff grows really well and I'm just letting one of the branches come into flowering so that I can collect some seeds for this year and um, the other ones I'm nipping them all so that I can enjoy more leaves because once you have the energy growing into the production of the flowers and then the seeds you get less potency coming into the leaves and uh, here are some flowers that are going up here and my barrage I planted way too late unfortunately these guys are my favorite last year because they give these wonderful blue flowers and every day I would come here and just pick a whole handful of them and add them to my salad got some fresh kale here that's uh, see this is talking about growth spurts this was literally one third less in size yesterday but because we had now two days of good weather what a difference and I'm hoping that this okra that I have down here will also grow out my cucumbers also started really late I'm hoping that they'll grow out before the seasons end and uh, yeah so I'm not gonna go into everything else I got going on here but uh, definitely Plant your stuff early, keep things rotating, and especially lettuces, you can go through those very quickly, and that's always a nice staple. Try different kinds of lettuces, and uh, enjoy your growing. Any questions? Leave comments, subscribe, like. Thanks a lot, people. Cheers.